Dear ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable, the Head of Educational Board, the Head of Library and Local Archive, the Head of Putra Sampurna Foundation SDO Program, speakers, educators, librarians, and all participants in this online seminar. Good afternoon. Greetings from here in Kanagawa, Japan. I hope everyone is in good health despite the current situation of COVID-19. My sincere appreciation to Mr. Kisno as the master trainer and coordinator of this seminar. I am humbled to be invited among the great speakers in this significant event. First of all, please allow me to express my sincere apology as I could not join this presentation and seminar online from Japan. However, I would like to do my best and share from what I have learned. And I hope we all can learn a few little things from what I'm about to share in this seminar. First, briefly, let me introduce myself. I was born in Uvum Kundur, Karimun Regency in Riau Island. I studied and completed my undergraduate in 2013 in Batam, where I got in contact with Mr. Kisno. I then worked few years in tuition center, schools, and non-governmental Buddhist organization of Sokagakai. In September 2017, I made a decision and I had the opportunity to continue my master in teaching English to speakers of other languages at Soka University of Japan until I was graduated last year in September. From then, I started job hunting and landed on a job in an after-school STEAM class in Sagamihara, Japan since February this year. It's a school for students with special needs, especially for ADSD and autism spectrum disorder. Now, let us go to the topics for today. I was hesitant earlier to share about literacy in Japan due to the fact that I've just been here for three years and I've just started working so there are more things for me to learn and it means I'm not an expert but I summon up my courage to share a little bit of experiences that I had as well as some information that I could gather from my friends and possibly this could help to expand our perspective toward the topics we are discussing today. I'm going to focus more into the literacy in Japan. Based on this outline, which is we'll talk from the beginning about Japan at glance from the past and now, Japanese culture and character, literacy in Japan, challenges, the Japanese language, and then creative ways in introducing literacy to kids in Japan, advancing literacy, as well as final thought on literacy. So before we talk more on this topic of literacy, why don't we do a little exercise uh, in front of our screen? So just raise your hand and wave if your answer to this question is yes. Have you been to Japan? Anyone? Number two, who wants to visit Japan someday after this corona pandemic is over? All right, thank you so much for participating. This is just to begin our connection with Japan. So first, I would like us to take a look at back in the history. In 1945, where other countries, including Indonesia, could finally gain independence, Japan was in the devastated loss and being the first country to be hit by nuclear bomb in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. However, who could imagine after 75 years, Japan has become one of the most advanced countries. And in these 75 years, 
there are huge differences between Japan and most of other Asian countries. More importantly, the differences do not lie merely on the number of skyscrapers, but also deep in the character and culture of the people. So, let us take a look at the Japanese in from the perspective of culture and character. So, some of us may know Japan with this stereotype punctuality, workaholic, and organized. They have the habit of being on time, always on time. So, most of them are punctual meetings as well as public transportation services are always on time if i met an appointment with japanese friends they will be most likely to arrive like at least 10 minutes early so why do they uh, do that from what i know they do this due to the, their consideration of others they don't want to let other people wait. So this is a good point. Next, workaholic. So people work hard. The culture is that for them to be a responsible employee. Many people work long hours. However, one thing to note is that this culture can also brought negative impact such as workers died from overworking. So the government and companies are trying to gradually decrease the number of overtime work here in Japan. And the last part is organized. We can see that most of things in Japan are well organized. Systematically in order, people follow the rule. We can see from how people queue up in the store or convenience store. How the government give precautions and anticipations ahead of disasters. And most visibly is the way they organize waste management in Japan and keep the country clean. So we can generalize all of this, but most of the time from what I see and it's with our own eyes, we can see all of this. So these are the price that they pay for the development of their nation. The accomplishment that they achieve only happen through the culture where people work hard, determined, and also disciplinize themselves in their life and their work. So these are interesting points to be highlighted for us as Indonesians who are also aiming to advance. Next. Let us talk about literacy in Japan. Japanese people are known for being a bookworm. So they have a really high interest in reading books. I can see this by myself in Japan. Uh, in daily life, whenever I'm in the train, I can see people reading books, newspapers, and currently there are more people turn to digital reading. And there are many bookstores in Japan, including bookstores for used books. By the way, what, what are they reading actually? Honestly, it depends. Most kids like manga. So I'm not sure why and how they really like to read manga. And maybe because it has pictures on it. So that might be a good reason for them to enjoy art and also at the same time, without being forced, they can improve their skills and literacy, especially in reading. That's why it's no doubt that the literacy in Japan is among the highest and it's comparable to Finland based on one of the survey from the Organization of Economic and Cooperation Development, OECD. So, looking at how proficient and literate Japanese are, I wonder about the challenges that they have. Sharing from my own perspective as a foreigner and coming to the country without the literacy in Japanese 
I found that I myself is in challenging situation to improve my literacy. One of the facts is the writing system, which is a bit more complicated than ours. And if you, one of you might have been learning Japanese or even work as a Japanese teacher, you should have recognized there are three types of character in Japanese. So first, hiragana and katakana are the phonetics symbol. It's representing one syllable. In general, this hiragana system is used to write the words originated from Japan, while katakana used mostly for loan words. For example, literacy cloud or the lizardan. Both are written in katakana. And last system is kanji. So this type of character is derived from Chinese character, which is an ideogram. Each word or character stands for a certain meaning. So some resources stated that kanji has over 50,000 characters. When, when I asked my Japanese friend, they said even Japanese people do not know some of kanji characters. And based on the data, Japanese kids in elementary schools have to memorize about 1,000 kanji and another 900 kanji in their junior high school. So this ch uh, the challenge. But however, with these challenges, Japanese still sustain the highest literacy level, which is fascinating to me. If we compare to our beloved country in Indonesia, we have a simpler access in terms of reading. We are based on Roman alphabets and we can access all words by reading it directly. While for Japanese language, if they do not know the kanji, they have to think really hard and interpret and find out how to read it. So for us Indonesian, we have the advantage because we can use even these alphabets that we learn to learn other languages as well. For example, English and most European languages with only few adjustments in the pronunciation. So next, we will take a look at some creative ways that Japanese have done in successfully introducing literacy to kids. We can't deny that every country has their own challenges and issues relating to the education, especially in the core of it, which is to raise the literacy of children. In Japan, there have been a long tradition that parents introduce kids to learn and read. The basis for literacy is in their early childhood. There are some creativity that Japanese use in introducing literacy into early childhood education. First, let us take a look at Kami Shibai. This is a traditional picture books show. So here is the picture of my colleague presenting at a conference in Nepal. She is an English teacher and she also incorporated this idea into her teaching. Kami Shibai literally means paper clay or paper drama. So it's an interactive way to start a show. It uses illustrated cards and put it into a box with a screen looks like an old television. So storytellers will tell, imitate, and sometimes ask questions to kids. And then they, can, they will pull out the cards to go to the next scene. And usually, most kindergarten teachers ha have this to introduce kids with li the stories. And yeah, it's very interesting way that maybe we can adopt in some way in Indonesia. Next, let us take a look at picture books. Here is a picture book by a modern illustrator, Noritake Suzuki. I saw this from one of the NSK video. 
he created a picture books which is very unique and fun. For example, this book, missing the face of the character. It only has the hair or the cap. So this missing part is for their parents to change and replace with their own faces. It's an interactive and it can help them to initiate communication with their children. So this is sounds fun, right? It might be a uh, idea that we can also incorporate it in our uh, education in Indonesia, which might be different, different character. So lastly, I would like to introduce this Kaluta games. This is a card games which is played by kids to a deaf. The card have two types for low level. They have pictures and another card they have phrase in hiragana. And for the higher level, they have pictures card and poem card in kanji. Players with the words on it have to read and other players have to find the pictures as fast as possible to win the match. So this way, literacy is introduced through games. Kids can learn to read the characters and having fun at the same time. In addition, the game usually start with two players who sit on a tatami mat, bow and greet each other. So this platform can help them to learn politeness. And I think it's a brilliant way to to introduce kids in both life skill, which is to be able to be uh, polite and also learn and improve their literacy at the same time. So now those are three actually those are three games that I can introduce in today's seminar. Now we'll take a look at the roles of individuals and community as well as government in advancing literacy. If we compare with Indonesia from what I observe, we actually have similar school system with Japan in formal education. The school system with six years elementary school, three years of junior high school, and three years of senior high school. So Japanese kids are also uh, starting to read and learn from primary one. And with the similar system, however, if we see that Japan has the highest level in literacy, who would you think are responsible for this success? There are actually many stakeholders and uh, people involved, including parents, teachers, governments. So as I got more curious to find out about these issues, I asked my friends, Japanese friends, and it shows that most important, the most important role in supporting kids' literacy in Japan is no one other than the involvement of parents especially mother. So the seed of motivation and interest in reading have been planted by parents. They encourage kids to read and learn and also taught kids how enjoyable it is to read. While from my talk with another parents, and she said that their kids from age six months old will receive two picture books from the city government. So there is a support from government to help parents introduce their kids with the literacy. Also at school, teachers in lower grades do a lot of storytellings for kids. And my friends mentioned that most schools students, they have a reading time before the class even though it was as short as 10 minutes every day. This means that the school teachers are encouraging students and create the reading habit. So here we can see from the information that I gathered that support from multiple parties is 
actually essential. And in this seminar, we have educators, we have librarians, volunteers, trainers. And what I found is rather than asking whose responsibility it is, maybe we all should take it as our responsibilities. So we can work together and supporting and in advancing literacy for kids. Just like what coordinators, volunteers, trainers, educators, teachers, and parents in this seminar are doing. So now I would like to highlight two important points from this presentation based on my thought. First, it's crucial to set a mindset for literacy. Literacy is life itself. So it takes time, effort, sincere dedication to develop as kids grow. Setting the right mindset becomes very important. Literacy is not only available in the classroom or formal education. In family, kids learn every single day, learning from their parents' environment, everything that they see, feel, listen, and touch. All of these are form of literacy. When we can see this, we can develop creativity to support kids' literacy in many ways, encouraging kids with reading habit and also praising every single progress they have made are definitely essential. The important part is to provide rich and various materials supported by sincere effort to interact with kids. This will progressively raise kids' awareness in their own necessities to learn how to read and write. So most kids then will automatically build their literacy. So it's about the motivation and desire comes from within. Once they do that, they can transform life. As Beverly clearly, children books also stated, even one chance encounter with a book can transform a child's life. Second point is I learned that we can incorporate culture in literacy development. What we can learn that Japanese people are proud of their culture and that local wisdom that they have have been brought and preserved until this time. This I think have actually been ongoing and implemented in Indonesia but promotions and supports still can be expanded. We as Indonesians have richer culture and traditions that we should be able to incorporate these local wisdoms and culture into the literacy program. As Indonesians, we can keep supporting our Indonesian artworks like comics or other character which is unique to Indonesia. This could help kids learn a lot and being literate of their own culture as well as in reading or writing. Lastly, in this digital era, especially after the COVID-19 has met everything online and depends intensively on the internet and technology, once again, we have to rethink and review how we want to advance kids' literacy. Are we going to wait longer for some time in the future or are we going to incorporate technology as a tool, as an assistant to support children's literacy? The answer will depend on many factors, but as technology is getting more and more accessible in society, we should not be late this time. We should be glad that there is a platform of literacy cloud which provides various quality material for kids. It has picture books and storybooks in cloud and it's available online and offline with Indonesian themes, which is exactly what we need at this time. Let's support and utilize this creative work to help advance literacy for kids in Indonesia. To end this presentation, 
I would like to appreciate all people around me who always encourage me to read books. I would also like to share a quote from my mentor and educator, Daisaku Ikeda. I quote, I believe that the means to encourage a flowering in the neglected inner life of children will always be exposure to literature and the arts. In short, I believe the key is to be found in reading books. Reading help people build character and discover their potential. Reading is a pleasure and also source of nourishment for our wisdom as human beings. It's a disappointment not to know how to write and read. At the end, thank you very much for giving me such an amazing opportunity to share in this seminar. I hope this presentation could in some ways contribute for actualizing literacy in Indonesia, especially in Delhi Serdang. Thank you so much and let's do our best for kids literacy in Indonesia. Thank you.